Oh, sorry, guys. Okay, so just to uh, recap, you saw what the exception stack trace is, right? Now, do you guys understand where to look at whenever your program crashes, your program fails? Where to look at? Did you guys understood that? Yes. Okay. So, what does the very first line in the error message tells you? What the ex exception is. What the exception what's is. What's the problem? Why it failed, right? And what does the very next line tells you? It will take you to the line where the error happened. Exactly. Okay. It tells you exactly the line number where it happened. Okay. And what does the very last line tells you? Origination. Okay. Where did it origin from? Okay. All right. So, in this program, where does your program where where does your program begin from? Entry from? The void main, public static void main. The main method. Okay, this is where the program begins. Okay, whichever program has the main method, that's where everything begins. So the very first line, we create an object of bank account. After that, what do we do? What happens at this line? We invoke the method, method one. Okay, so where does the control go? To the public class bank account, public void method one. Right. Okay, so what happens to this line? It will print. Uh, it will print by. Okay, it will be on hold. Okay, until you come back from method one, this will not be printed. Okay, when you say method one, the control jumps over to the other program. Okay, you go here. So while you are still processing method one, this line will be paused. Okay, you don't get to execute that. Okay, so how does the Java system remembers all that thing? Stack trace. Okay, the stack. So stack is a process. So do you guys know what a stack is? Stack of pizza boxes, one above the other, isn't it? Yes. So when you want to go through the pizza boxes, how do you go? Okay, do you start from the top or from the bottom? From top to bottom. Top to bottom, okay. Whenever you stack something, okay, imagine if you have stacked cars, okay, let's say you have 10 cars stacked one above the other. Would you dare pull the bottom car first? Everything will fall, isn't it? Yes. You start from the top and then the next, then the next, then the next. Okay. So stack is usually a LIFO process. Does anyone know what is the abbreviation for LIFO? Last in, first out. Yes. Okay. LIFO is last in, first out. Whichever method is, uh, whichever uh, item is on the very top that one gets the chance to finish the job first, okay? Whichever is in the bottom, whichever is the first item you kept in the bottom, that will be processed in the very end, okay? Just like cars. When you're keeping car, when you're stacking cars, you start with the first car, then you keep another car on top of it, another car on top of it, another car on top of it. This is the last car you keep on the very top, now, when you're removing all these things, how do you start? Do you start in the same order or do you start with the last car first? Last first. You start with the last car first, the last item. Okay. While you're putting, you start from one, two, three, four, like that. And whichever item is on the very top, that gets the chance to be removed first. That's the meaning of last in and the first one to get out. Okay, that is last in, first out. So let's see how this relates to your programming stack. Okay. So here you begin with this line. Uh, you create this object. At which point, at which line number, did you give the control to another method or another program?
in this class which line number gives control to another method or program five line number five okay when you encounter line number five control goes to here okay so what java does is java remembers that okay the program name is test student okay and the method is main okay and the line number is five this is where this is the last seen record okay this is the this is where we were last seen in the test student method okay now once you give control to method one it goes here right it goes here so what we do okay let me put a sys out everywhere Okay, so from this line, line number five, you went to method one. Okay, you came here. And from this line, when you enter the method body, what is the very first line? We invoke method two. So what happens when you come here? We go to method two. We go to method two, we go here. So at this point, you did pause even method one. It will not print one either. It will not print this line. Because on line number five, you gave control to method two here. Okay, so that goes in your record as well. Okay, so bank account class. Okay, from here, we came to bank account class. And in bank account class method one, line number five is where we are pausing. Okay, this is where we pause. Okay, this is where we pause. Now, once you pause on line number five, the control goes to method two. So once you enter the method two, what happens next? We again call method three. We are calling method three. Okay, so this is where we pause now. Bank account class, method two, line number nine. This is where we pause, okay? bank account method two line number nine is what, where we pause now okay we pause here and give the control to method three now so when you come here the first thing you do is create the if you want to call method four which is in customer class how do you do it create a new item create, create a, a new object okay object. if you want to call a method of another class you have to create an object of that okay now, why can't I call just customer dot method for here? Since why can't I say customer dot method for? Why do I have to create an object? They are in different package. Different class. No. We just did that in the last chapter. It's not the static. It's not static. If the method was static, you don't have to create an object. This is fine. Customer dot method four. This is fine because the method is static. If the method is not static, error. Okay, in that case, you need to create an object. Remember everything that we do in previous classes, guys. Okay. All right. So when we go to line number 14, we created object and we say method four. Where does the control go now? The method four class customer. And method four. Okay, we go to customer class method four. So where did we pause? We paused on line number four. So this is what happens. Every time you call a method which is like parenthesis control jumps from that line to this whatever method you're calling okay to keep track of what's going on who called whom right to keep track of all these things 
this stack trace will be very very handy okay so from bank account method 3 line number 14 okay from here we jump to the customer program method 4 okay so from line number 14 so when i come here and call method 4 the first thing it does is prints 4 after printing 4 what happens here the program fails right when you divide by 0 infinity infinity number cannot be stored in integer integer can only store 2 billion okay integer can only support up to 2 billion can you store infinity number in integer no integer has a limit that is 2 billion okay so this line will throw an error so where did this problem happened in customer class method 4 line number 4 okay in customer class method 4 line number 4 this is where the problem happened okay so now let's run the program and see if it matches our stack trace look at this message okay the message from java is there was divide by zero okay customer dot method four customer dot method four line four customer dot method four line four bank account method three line 14 bank account method three line 14 bank account method two line nine it goes all the way to where it all began okay test student main method test student main method line number five so this is where everything began the origin point when you gave the control from main program okay when you gave the control from main program that's the origin point okay where, where so what that means is origin means is which which where did you had the first switch everything started from this program correct which is the first line where you had to switch from this program to another program or another method this one isn't it this is the line where it everything began this is the line where we gave control from the main method to another method and then it spiraled okay then it goes in a nested loop okay main method calls method one method one calls method two calls method three method three calls method four so or why all the while when everything is happening you can literally see that in the stack trace so the stack trace make sense now what is or what are all those um, lines yes sir okay so this line tells you what is wrong somewhere you're dividing by zero which results in infinity number and where you're doing that you're doing that in customer program method 4 line number 4 okay in the customer program the method name is method 4 and the line number is 4 this is where the problem is and everything started from here it started from here you went method 1 method 2 method 3 and your program failed at this line origin and the root cause okay the root problem where the error happened you can see both of them and you can also see what happened in the middle how did you jump how did you end up here okay you might be wondering right you started here and somehow you ended up here so you might be wondering how did you get here from there to here for that reason you can trace your steps okay you can trace your steps line by line from here we went here method one from method one we went to method two from method 2 we went to method 3 and from method 3 we went to this where it caused the error okay so it is like a tracing it will trace your steps footsteps okay so is everyone clear about the stack trace
Yes. Yes. All right. So now that you know stack trace, let's get to the main thing. How do we write programs for exception handling? Okay. Okay, so these are the programming lines. Okay, these are your programming lines. So exception handling is done using three keywords, try, catch, and finally. Okay, try, catch, and finally. Okay, it is different than final. Okay, you have try, catch, and finally. Okay, remember it is not final as in constant it is finally okay try catch and finally so try is a block okay it's a block where we typically keep the lines that you suspect might throw error okay this is where you wrap your code which you feel might throw an error. Okay, so let's get to the first line. Looking at these lines, which place do you feel you might get an error? Eight. Line number eight. Okay, so any times you do a divide by operation, you have to be careful. Whatever you have on the right hand side of the divide operator, if this happens to be zero, you might get an error you might get an error like divide by zero arithmetic error infinity error so declaring this obviously there won't be any problem storing zero in an integer variable no problem okay storing 20 no problem printing something no problem okay so out of all these line you suspect as a developer you suspect at any point if a's value is zero i will get arithmetic error the infinity error okay so this is the suspect okay if you assume or you predict that this line will throw an error the first thing you do is wrap it in a try block that's what the try block is for okay Look at all your program, look at all the code that you have and figure out which line might throw error. Okay, figure out which line might throw error and then wrap them in a try block. Okay, as the name goes, try, meaning you are suspecting that it might happen. So we are just keeping that in a trial mode. This will be a carefully monitored block. We will monitor this one line, which we suspect might throw an error. That's what the term try means. We are going to try this code. If something goes wrong, we'll be ready. So does everyone understand how to use try? Yes. Whichever yes, lines you suspect will throw an error, you need to wrap them inside a curly bracket with the try keyword. Okay, wrap them inside the curly bracket with the try keyword. Okay, that's the first step. Now catch is where you take actions. Okay, so think about catch like a damage control. Okay, what damage control can you do if there, if whatever line you suspect might throw, 
does throw an error what is the damage control we can do okay what can we uh, do to convey our message properly okay you take actions if something goes wrong that's the catch block Okay, I'll get to this thing in a minute. Okay, this is how we write catch. Catch with a parenthesis, and this is the exception type. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so here I will give a sensible message. Last time you got the red error. For a normal customer, that would not make any sense. For a normal customer, whatever you write, line number, stack trace, it's all gibberish. They wouldn't understand anything from that. Okay. So whenever this arithmetic error happens, my job is to make sure I convey a proper message that customer can understand. Okay. So I will give a message. Message. Okay. I'm saying I'm guiding the customer on what to do. If they want to avoid this error, okay. So this is where you suspect the error will happen, and this is the damage control. Okay, this is where you catch. Okay, this line might throw error, and if it throws, if someone throws, what do you do? If someone throws a ball at you, what do you do? Catch. catch. You catch the ball. Hence the term catch. If there is some problem here, that will be caught by this block. Okay. If anything goes wrong here, it will be caught by this block. Okay. All right. So let's see now. Okay, what does it say? Please enter a non zero number for division. Did you see that scary red error message? No. no. Okay, one more thing before I do this. Anytime you miss handling the message, the program will terminate right there. Okay, now the same message again, method one, method one goes to method two, method three, finally method four, this is where we get the error. Okay, so I run this program and you get this error. Now in this three programs, how many sysouts did we have? Five. Five one two three four and five if everything went smoothly you should see five print statements okay so let me remove this error and if everything goes smoothly Okay, everything goes smoothly. It prints everything. Four, three, two, one, by. All the print statements done. So, in this case, whenever an error happens, do you see all the print statements? All the five print statements? No. You don't. Whenever your program terminates, okay, your program terminates here. So, when it ends here, you never went back to method three and printed three. You never went back here and printed method two. You never went back here and printed one. And you never went back to main method and printed by. So all the things that were coming next, they all suddenly stopped. So that's what we call terminate. Okay, or crash. 
okay another important thing that exception handling allows you to do that is graceful shutdown okay your program just doesn't stop there you can still continue with the rest of the program rest of the code okay you can still perform the next thing provided you have it wrapped in a try catch okay exception handling allows you a graceful shutdown terminate is what abruptly terminated without any warning okay without any warning it will abruptly terminate graceful shutdown is if there is a failure in your program it will just keep going okay it will just keep going with the next thing and the next thing and the next thing okay let's look at this program now here without the try catch okay after the division statement do we have four print statements yes so let's see the output do you see any print statements here any printed statements here no so did the program gracefully shut down or abruptly shut down abruptly shut down abruptly when you had a problem in this line divide by 0 the program just terminates abruptly shut down it doesn't continue anymore it doesn't print your process your remaining lines that's it end of story okay with exception handling now that we wrap it in a try and catch okay even though this line will still cause the error divide by 0 okay it will still cause the error but this time it wouldn't abruptly shut down you got the error you conveyed your message okay something went wrong please enter non zero numbers we warned the customer and did we keep going with the remaining lines yes okay so that's the difference that's the difference between exception handling and a normal code okay if you do not have exception handling your program will just terminate just like that without any warning okay with exception handling we have a graceful shutdown graceful meaning it runs its course and then finishes when you reach the end of the main method you exit okay this is a graceful shutdown the very last line in this method is print as so this is a graceful shutdown if your program just ends in the middle we call it termination abruptly ends okay so that's another benefit of exception handling okay now when you have try and catch there is one more thing you need to see out of all this sits out do you see anything missing division done this line is missing division done okay let me add one more division started it prints it doesn't print division done okay so rather than risking the entire program to abruptly end what will happen in the try block is whichever line you have the error the remaining lines in that block will be skipped okay you will skip all the lines in the remaining uh, all the remaining lines in the try block okay since the error happened on this line line number 11 this is the only line that you skipped but you still continue whatever comes next after the try catch okay so that's another thing you need to remember inside the try block it will not execute everything if there is a problem at this line it will skip the remaining lines and directly go to the damage control section catch block 
Okay, it goes here and it prints. Please enter non-zero numbers. Okay, now this time, tell me which line is missing. Line is, on the... This line is missing, right? <coughs> so the control will only go to cache block if an exception is thrown. Okay. The control goes to cache block only if an error or exception is thrown in the try block. Only then the control goes. It makes sense, right? Now, if you log in, does the website say it's oh, a very good job? Your user ID password was matching. There was no problem. Does any such message pop up? Okay, if your user ID password does not match, you get an error. Unknown user ID password, please. Okay. Do you get any such message if you successfully log in? No, right? If you're using an ATM, you have $100 and you withdraw $50. Does it warn you anything like, okay, you have enough balance and you can withdraw? Or does it only show you a message <laughs> if things goes wrong, like you don't have enough balance? Okay, so this cache block, like what I said, damage control, it will only step in if there is any damage to control. So in this particular code, do you see any problem that might come in the try block? Is there any damage done in the try block in any of these three lines? No damage, no damage control. Okay, there was no problem, no error in these lines. So no step has to be taken. That's what the try cache does. If there is a damage, if there is a problem, only then the cache block will step in. Okay, this is the problem solver. If there is no problem, nothing to solve. Okay, remember that. So the rules are you write all the code that are prone to errors that you suspect to throw errors in the try block <coughs> okay you write all the code inside a try, try block which you suspect might throw error okay i'm not saying will it might throw error sometimes it won't throw error like this case sometimes it won't throw error and sometimes it will throw error so that's why we say it might throw error. So whichever lines you suspect might throw error, we put it in the try block. Catch block is the damage control. <clears throat> okay, catch block is the damage control. If something goes wrong, what do we do? What steps do we take? How do we fix it? What message do we convey to the user so they understand what was wrong? Okay, the control goes to cache block only if there is a problem to solve, there is a damage to control. If no damage, no problem, cache block will not be executed. Okay, so the third point at any point, any line in the try block, if there is an error, it will skip the remaining lines. Okay, it will skip the remaining lines. At any point, if you get an error, it will skip the remaining lines. So is all three statements, is all three points clear? Yes? Yes. Ask questions if you have any. So what we do next is I have a requirement, okay? Like think about the ATM software itself. You go to ATM machine and you withdraw 
you don't have enough balance transaction fails that is one scenario bad experience and there is a good experience where you go withdraw money you have enough balance you get the cash in both good and bad in the end what is the message that both the customer see are the message is same or are they different the very last screen same it's same no matter what it is you had enough balance or not <clears throat> in the end it always says thank you for using bank of america thank you for using chase does the atm software not thank you if you had lower balance is that the case no no okay so there are some situations where you want to write a thank you message let's try that if i write a thank you message here okay we have a division software and we want to thank customer for using our software okay now can you guarantee this will be printed every single time no you can because if there is an error here like it will happen now okay so this is a successful scenario okay this is a good scenario where nothing goes wrong and what will happen you will thank the customer okay you greet the customer this is a good scenario customer was successfully able to withdraw successfully able to divide this is a good scenario you did thank customer what if customer gives wrong input they were not able to do the transaction something caused the problem <clears throat> if i do this time did you thank the customer did your program greet in the end no you didn't so <coughs> what if okay again it will end in 5 minutes what if i put the message here this time it is greeting for a bad scenario this time it is greeting for a bad scenario how about good scenario Did you greet the customer this time? No. So, if you write some lines in either catch block or in the try block, what will happen? It's a either or scenario. It will either print it when it is a good scenario or it will print when it is a bad scenario. So, try catch is more like a either or if else kind of a scenario. for that reason we have one more thing called final loop okay this is the block which guarantees execution no matter if it is a good scenario no errors or it is a bad scenario errors that's what finally used for finally is a guaranteed block okay finally is a guaranteed block try and catch or not guaranteed if you write a line here it will only print print it when things goes wrong bad scenario the try block is also not guaranteed if something goes wrong you cannot print it in the good scenario it will print it so try and catch are not a guaranteed block something goes wrong you will skip the remaining lines if there is a good scenario you will never come to catch block so these two are not guaranteed what is guaranteed the final loop block okay so let's try this you are thanking for a good scenario this is the bad scenario where exception happens divide by 0 and you are still thanking okay so you thank the customer if it is a good scenario or bad scenario that's what finally means it's a guaranteed execution guaranteed block 
Okay. Okay, this block will always be executing all the lines. It will never skip anything. Try, lines will be fixed, uh, skipped if a uh, execution, uh, if an error happens. Catch will be skipped if it is a good scenario. Finally, is guaranteed. Okay, so remember these three lines. And remember this. Lines that you suspect might throw error, you wrap it in try block. What action you want to take? You want to print a clear message? Do it in catch block. If you need something printed, no matter what, error happens or not, finally <laughs> is the way to go. Okay. Okay, the session will end anytime. So I will just stop it today and we'll continue tomorrow. Okay. Catch not guaranteed for a good no error scenario. Okay, try is not guaranteed for a bad or error scenario. Okay, if error happens, you skip all the lines after the error. Okay, so remember this. All right, understand why we need exception handling. Understand what exactly it, hel it helps you with. Okay, <clears throat> shut down, debugging, okay? And how do you convey a message rather than throwing arithmetic exception and blah, blah? You can give clear message. Please enter non-zero number. This customer can relate to some gibberish, Arithmetic exception, divide by zero, they won't understand anything. Okay, sensible message. You can customize different messages as well. Understand what is stack trace. Okay, you know how the stacks are collected. You know why.